this video is about how to get started in registering for the Congenital Muscle Disease International Registry, also known as the CMDIR. The first thing you want to do is go to the website www.cmdir.org. And let me go back to that screen. When, and this will be the page that you see. And um, the first thing you can do is you can select your language. So say, for example, it's currently set in English, but if you wanted to do the survey in Spanish, you just click on that and it will be translated into the other language. And if you hover over it, it pops up in the original, original language. So I am an English speaker, so I'm going to go back to English. That's the first thing I wanted to show you. So you can read about this, about um, the purpose of it, some of the diagnoses that are covered. Essentially, it covers the congenital myopathies and the congenital muscular dystrophies, all subtypes. And it also includes the limb girdle spectrum, spectrum for both disease groups. Here's a list of diseases that are covered. But don't worry, if you don't have a set diagnosis, you can still register, and I'm going to show you that too. These are the organizations that support the registry. These are the various countries that are participating, people from diff these countries. And this is, tells you here, um, the participants have the following diagnosis, and it gives the percentages. So we just want to keep expanding um, the number of participants. Um, there's a separate video to talk about the purpose of the CMDIR and why you might want to register, so you can check that out as well. Um, so after you go to this page, you want to click on this button that says Register. So I'm going to go there now. And this is the registration page. There's some basic information that talks about um, Welcome to the Registry, part of its purpose. It also says here that you do not need to have a genetic diagnosis, so that's also important. When it comes to the questions, we'd like you to answer them as fully as possible. Um, not all questions may be applicable to your child or affected individual, whether it's an adult or a child. So you can skip some of the, or not skip them, but you can put um, does not apply. That's an option for a lot of the questions. So um, if there's questions that you don't understand, you can refer to up under fact sheets. There's a glossary here that you can open up, and then it might help you to understand some of the words that are used if you don't understand them. So that's a resource. And the other option is to contact the counselor at the CMDIR um, at this email address right here. Um, once you're registered, the profile will be created for each registrant and it can be revised. And it also is reviewed by a clinical curator, which is someone who um, takes a look at and maintains um, the database and also a genetic counselor. Also keep in mind, if you have more than one affected person in your family, you're going to have one login and password for mul multiple profiles. So you're just going to, each family member will have a separate profile, but you will have one username and password, okay? So to begin, um, ad additionally, if you have a, are affected by FKRP, please also consider registering in this registry that's located right here, and then you can find that information on the website. So the first thing you want to do is begin by creating your account. Oops, sorry, I went too far. Create your account. So it says name here, and the name that actually goes in here, this is the name of the person that's actually filling out the form. So that could be you or it could be a loved one, your first and last name. Then you want to create a username. The username must be at least three characters and contain um, zero, a digit zero to nine at or le and a letter, A through Z. You want to put in an email address. Please make sure a valid email address is sent in. And a confirmation email will be sent to this address after regis upon registration. And you want to set up a password. The password should contain no spaces, be at least six characters, and contain lower and uppercase letters, numbers, and, sp and can also include special signs. 
Okay, and then you want to verify that password by typing it again. And here you want to include your relationship to the patient. So you can click on this little button and a drop down menu will appear and you like if you're a parent or something, you could click on that. You're registering your child. Here it allows you to put in a second email. Say, for example, there's two parents and you have separate email accounts. They both like to stay up to date with information, so you can include an additional email there. This asks, would you like to register, uh, would you like to receive the CMDIR newsletter? And that's a drop down menu. Just click on it, yes or no. I highly recommend that you receive the newsletter. There's a lot of really great information that you can get, information about latest research, we have um, educational webinars and all kinds of things. So it's just a really great way to stay up to date. If you're not sure, you can always click yes and if you don't like the emails that are coming in down the road, you can always change it. So I, I just highly recommend that you put yes. Now here, you want to put the affected person's name. And again, keep in mind, if you have more than one affected person, say like you have two children that are affected, you're going to create a separate profile for each person under an existing u single username. And I'm going to show that in a separate vi video of how to do that. So the person's first name, middle name, last name. Gender, which is their sex, if they're a boy or girl. And the race, you just click on these boxes to identify the race ethnic background, and then date of birth. So there's two options here. You can use the drop down menu to put in the month and then go to the day and then to the year. But there's also a, a calendar. If you click on that, you can it'll pop up and you can click that way too. So um, if you can also register a loved one that has passed away. And so if you just want to include the date that they died, then you that would be the deceased date. And likewise, it's the same way, either the pop-up calendar or in using these drop-down menus. And put in I your address, city, state, province, if that applies to you for your address. And um, the country, phone number, secondary phone number, cell phone, physician name. Here, for physician, you um, can put in your neurologist or what other physician that you feel that you have the most contact with that's a sort of a primary contact for the affected person if you don't have a neurologist. And if you have a specific hospital or clinic that you go to are affiliated with, you can enter that too because we'd like to down the road maybe establish certain relationships with people that we find that we have a lot of our families um, that go to. And if there's an email, this is an email for your physician if they have that applies and their phone number. Also collecting information about generally what kind of insurance are um, people are covered by. So you can click here, what kind of insurance. You want to read through this section so that you have an understanding about your participation and whether or not you want to participate and what it means to participate. Um, additional information, we will be looking and asking for genetic test results and or muscle biopsy or skin biopsy results. Just it's very useful to, to um, have this information for the registry. And there's some other medical forms that we would love to get, which is the pulmonary function test, echocardiogram. And you can collect those reports. You can upload them through the website, but you can also fax them. And this is the fax number to send it to. Your privacy is very important to us. And we have a very specific policy related to, policy, to privacy. And it's outlined here. So I recommend that you take the time to take a look at, at the, um, how your privacy is respected in this area. This talks a briefly about um, registering more than one affected person. And we also would like to include young people in the registration. So if you're a parent or guardian of a child under the age of 18 and you think that the child is old enough to understand the idea of the registry, we recommend that you talk with them about it and you could get them to cooperate with it. For people that are over 18, it's good that they register for themselves unless um, you have legal, gu legal guardianship or they needed support, additional support.
And so that is the beginning of how to register. So when you're ready, then you would just click on this button. Oh, it's telling me I need to fill out all these fields. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, there's going to be more later.